December Solstice Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 1, Angle of Elevation of the Sun. This video is going to borrow significantly from the Equinox Observations, where we also measured the angle of elevation of the Sun. But there's new stuff in there, so please stay tuned. On the December Solstice, we're going to have three quick observations, the first of which is the angle of elevation of the Sun. In other words, when it's at solar noon, we're going to measure how high it is above the horizon. The other two observations will be the azimuth, or the compass direction of sunrise and sunset, and the third one will be the path of the sun. Preparation and tools. First, we're going to look up the time of solar noon, and then we're going to make a solar clinometer. You can go to a website such as suncalc.org, put in your location, put in the date of the solstice, and the time you're looking for is the sun peak level. Now this is just a coincidence. It normally is not exactly at 12 noon, but it ha just so happens that at Philadelphia, on the solstice, it's going to be 12 noon. But make sure you find out what it is for your location. Or you could look up using timeanddate.com. Their display shows a whole month at a time, so make sure you scroll down and look at the December uh, 21st or 22nd date. The last column is the column for solar noon. Making a solar clinometer. This one's pretty easy. You take a pencil, a piece of cardboard, a clip, some tape, some string or thread, and most importantly, a plastic protractor. Start by stabbing the pencil through the cardboard. And then you're going to take the protractor, make sure this one has a hole where the vertex is, and you're going to tape it onto the pencil. Make sure that it is very securely butted up against the side of the pencil with no gaps and no overlaps. Then you're going to thread some thread or string through the hole, and you can either tape it on the other side or tie it off with a toothpick. I prefer the toothpick because I want it to swing freely. And then attach the clip to the end, and you've got a finished clinometer. Now, Sean Hufford has suggested that a better modification might be to use a straw. In this case, I'm using a tube of paper so that the sun can actually shine through the straw and you might be able to get a better alignment. For my modification, I'm using a paper screen. If you want to have a little bit more precision, you can actually use a larger protractor. So you can print your own protractor off the internet and print it off onto a uh, sheet of office paper, then maybe glue it to a uh, piece of cardboard. Or you can actually buy a protractor that's designed for a chalkboard or a whiteboard. Now we're going to make a careful observation. And it's very st straightforward. We're going to do it at solar noon on the solstice. And we're going to measure the angle of elevation at the sun of the sun at that very moment. So using our handmade solar clinometer, we're going to point the pencil towards the sun. And then we're going to align it so that the shadow disappears. This means the pencil is exactly pointed at the sun. The string is hanging down in front of the protractor, and there we're, then we're going to make our reading. If you're using the Hufford modification, please notice that we're looking for the sun to be perfectly aligned with the straw that is on top of the protractor. So as the string hangs down, what I did is I just snapped a photo. That way I wouldn't have to try to read it at the same time as aligning the pencil. But what is this reading on this protractor? It is 68 degrees. So that's what the protractor says, but what's the actual angle of elevation? Well, it's 90 minus the protractor reading. So for example, our protractor said 68 degrees. We're going to subtract 68 from 90. We'll get 22 degrees angle of elevation. Now let's take a look at a globe versus flat earth analysis. So on the December solstice, it is a very special day for the globe in that the North Pole is tilted as far as it's going to be away from the sun, 23.4 degrees. It also means the sun's rays fall directly above the Tropic of Capricorn. In the Flat Earth map, we also have the Tropic of Capricorn with the sun tracing a circle directly above it. So let's focus in on the globe Earth as we analyze the December solstice. 
So let's think back to when we talked about the equinox. And at the equinox, the North Pole is essentially uh, vertical with respect to the sun's rays. So let's uh, place a mark from the center of the Earth to the surface at a 30 degree angle from the equator. Where that point hits the Earth's surface is called 30 degrees north latitude. And if you extend the line through the Earth like a pole, the sun's rays will be at a 30 degree angle from this pole. So if you were to stand next to this pole, let's say it's a flagpole, and you were to measure the angle of elevation, it's going to be a 60 degree angle of elevation. Well now we're going to be talking about the December solstice, when the North Pole is tilted 23.4 degrees away. Again, we're going to have our little observer and the flagpole, and just to remind you of where the equinox angle was, now the sun is going to be 23.4 degrees lower than it was when it was at equinox. Now this will be true for anybody on the globe. Whatever the angle of elevation for the equinox, the angle for the December solstice will be 23.4 degrees southward from there. And this works northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. It works, it works everywhere on the globe. Now let's talk about the Flat Earth analysis for a December solstice. So again, on the Flat Earth map, with the North Pole at the center, the Sun is tracing the orange path in this diagram above the Tropic of Capricorn. The most popular map is the Gleason map, otherwise known as an AE projection. But you don't have to use that map. You can use a map of your choosing. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to stick with the AE projection and we're going to focus in on this little triangle that starts at the North Pole, extends to the Tropic of Capricorn, and then also completes it with the Sun. So here is that triangle, and it is actually to scale if the Sun above the Flat Earth is 3,000 miles in elevation. So on the far left we have the North Pole, at the far right we have the Tropic of Capricorn, and nearby, nor towards the right, we have the Equator. So if we have an observer Let's say we place an observer at 40 degrees north latitude, such as Philadelphia. We need to measure the distance from the Tropic of Capricorn. So we simply take the number of degrees and add 23.4, and then we're going to multiply this by 69 miles per degree. Then we're going to shoot an angle up towards the sun, and we're going to call that angle theta. And how do you find the angle of elevation? It is simply the arctangent of 3,000 divided by d. Again, you don't have to use the Gleason's map. You don't have to use 3,000 miles. But you do need to know how far you are from the tropic and then how far your sun is in the sky. So you're welcome to use your own numbers. Then you can still use the arctangent. So in summary, First, we're going to find the number of degrees from the Tropic of Capricorn and label this T. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's really simple. We take our latitude and we add 23.4 degrees. In the Southern Hemisphere, we'll take our latitude and subtract 23.4 degrees. And if we end up with a negative number, we'll just discard the minus sign. This will give the number of degrees from the Tropic of Capricorn. Then we need to convert that to the angle of elevation above the globe Earth, that will be 90 minus t. But of the flat Earth, above the flat Earth, we need to convert that to a distance. So t times 69 miles per degree is d, and then the angle of elevation will be the arctangent of 3,000 divided by d. To make the math a little bit easier for you, I've created a December solstice angle of elevation calculator that does all the math that I've described in this video automatically. All you need to do is input your latitude. And it will calculate the, uh, do some intermediate calculations and then the final result. And it's kind of interesting to see uh, how far off the, the prediction will be. So if somebody in Philadelphia were to measure the angle of elevation of the sun, and if that person were to do it very accurately, they might get a piece of evidence towards either the globe earth or the flat earth. So if you'd like to share your results, YouTube user Kara Diane has created message boards, and you can put in your results, your angle of elevation, and your latitude. The boards are not a place to debate 
uh, Flat Earth versus Globe Earth. It's just a place for people to share results. Our next video is going to be on the azimuth, or the compass direction of the sunrise and sunset on the December solstice. So again, you'll need a camera, you'll need an east-west street, but most importantly, you'll need the number of hours of sunshine. Please remember what Morrissey said, it's so easy to hate, but it does take strength to be gentle and kind. Thank you.